It is February the 24th, 2024, and this is the future of photography that date threw me. <laughs> the future of yes. photography. Twenty-four dot two dot twenty-four in Europe, in the US, it's weird. Oh yeah, it is. Date is yeah, always yeah. weird, isn't it? I hadn't thought about it that way. <laughs> especially Hi, Adrian. When, especially Hi, when you're on a, a television show that the art department may be English and marks some dates yeah. reversed from the US, and everyone goes, "Oh, did we shoot that already?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that that and that and the the time zone switches that don't happen at the same day is just yeah. Dates are weird. Um it is episode 292 of our little podcast here and okay, so I I want to I want to kick this off with a little throwback to the last episode. I'm not going to play anything here, but uh at around minute 27 it's worth going back especially in the video version because um i think jeremiah and i we riffed on the idea of future media consumption being like generated in your pocket by an ai and everyone having a different experience and then someone on the show said something along the lines of what good is it if it's not a shared experience and i really i, I really I went back to the video and watching Adrian's face <laughs> while we talk about this and and it's it's like I don't even know how to explain it discomfort a a, a massive dose of discomfort here so let's just say I'm not good at poker <laughs> <laughs> definitely so uh, admittedly that was about media consumption um and that and that prospect of everyone possibly having like a different experience in the future um as is something we can discuss somewhere in a completely different show but um i would like to take this sentiment of the like the shared experience thing as a starting point to talk about yeah why it is we do the thing we do which is taking photos and, right? And, Is it a shared? Ex does it have to be a shared experience? Is sharing I, an important part of it? I I, th I think there's two parts to it, and and as a sidebar, on an emotional level, uh, having now spent an, yet another week with the uh, Apple Vision Pro, really the the, the it, lonely maker. Yeah, I, and and there are experiences in it that are absolutely profound. Uh, they are unbelievably um, compelling in terms of total immersion, environmental, and um, just rendered so beautifully, sound and vision. And in, the, in kind of experiencing them, I felt so frustrated that I couldn't share them, mm -hmm. that I couldn't. Uh -huh. You know, at least even if someone had similar, similar experiences with their own um, uh, vision pros, the immediacy of a moment, for example, there's a, a, a 3D immersive environmental uh, video of a rhinoceros sanctuary, rhino sanctuary in South Africa, wherein the cameras they kind of presented and hid and whatnot allowed you to be like inches away from these rhinos who would be feeding and whatnot, uh, like that you can feel the need to reach out and touch them and pet them. That's how real it was and how beautiful it would be and to share Melbourne. that experience. <laughs> well, that's <laughs> the advantage of the, the pro. But, <laughs> But again, I felt the that. On the other hand, in the process of making images, walking uh, with a camera, um, even in a group, I feel that there is a, a a real personal process here, a practice, shall we call it, um, that is really um, one of those things that is almost impossible to share. Even though you're looking at the same thing, there is that individual aspect of experiencing it. Having experienced that moment, 
the need to share it, I think, becomes profound because of our DNA, our humanity. We are a collective, and that's how we survive. Mm. Maybe we'll have to like split that 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 process into two parts. There's the process of the generation, and there's the process of the um, consumption or yeah. the sharing. So for me, I I know both worlds: the solitary being out there uh, on my own. Um, or wishing I was on my own, um, uh, uh, taking pictures, and it it does help if your uh, your significant other is a photographer too. It does really help, like like in, yeah, a, in a family situation like um, where you are the only photographer. There, that's that's when I wish I was just on my own. Um, luckily that doesn't happen because Monica is a photographer. So, um, even, even if I say I, I need 20 minutes, just no, no questions asked. Of course you have those 20 minutes, you have two hours if you need them. Um, so that can be a very, very solitary experience. The process of seeing, of composing, of capturing, of, uh, of, of experiencing, of, of taking it in, um, it, But then also there's the photo walk with a group of like five, six people going through a city, um, finding interesting things and and influencing each other's choices by, hey, I know something over there. Let's let's all go over there. Cool. Let me see. I wouldn't have found this with any without the help. Um, it's a different experience. And it's also a great experience to then compare what you got, how you looked at things. So, um, yeah, I, I've never done that, so I don't, I don't know what that would be like to have a. It's a good a, experience a if, if, especially if you have like uh, an area that has interesting things to see, and you have maybe even a little plan. These are the ten things we want to see in one afternoon. Um, can be a really great experience. But you, Jeremiah, you are you're a solitary photographer. You go out there on your own with your camera around mm -hmm. your neighborhood. I and do. revisit the same places over and over again, and and always find things that are new. And, and maybe, maybe the the joy in that is when I work um, in film, uh, film or television. It is such a collective experience. You know, I'm 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 working. Yeah, I'm providing a direction, a map, if you will, for you know 200 people engaging constantly behind and in front of the camera. Um, also with the storytelling aspect of it. Um, so I'm channeling the, the, the writing, whether it's my own or others, but there's a big collective movement, uh, like turning a tanker, <laughs> right? So every decision I make in terms of photography, composition, tone, mood, etc., um, involves a, a lot of people. And you and, have to let go a lot of the things that 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 you, that you have others decide or maybe influence at least. Yeah, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't even call it letting go as much as encouraging others to bring their creative energy to the forefront, and they are there because I trust their unique sensibilities and want right. the best of it and understand that the... And that could be anyone. That could be the director of photography. That could be the costume a, department. That could be mask. An assistant. That could be, it could be, yeah. a, you know, a kid that is working for the first time bringing coffee who goes like, wow, that's cool. Have you, th look at that or something like that. So being open to the collective experience is the process of making film. And so walking alone quietly with a camera in an environment is a, in a way, a refuge <laughs> from that. <laughs> and, and I'm not saying one is better than the other. They're very, very different situations. And I, I, I would also hazard to say that they feed each other in terms of their creative, I, you know. I think feeding each other is a really good way of putting it because for me, I can either do the photo walk or I can make photographs. I can't socialize and make photographs because I have to concentrate. I have to be in a, a zone of some sort. You know, I have to be able to, you know, to, to focus on that. Whereas, you know, if, if there's a group of people and I'm you know, with, you know, with the group, um, Uh, sorry, if, if I'm interacting with the group, 
then that's great, but it stops me from taking photographs <laughs> completely. I can only do one thing at a time. Does it does it does it make you take worse photographs or does oh, it yeah. Hell yeah. completely yeah, stop you taking them? Yeah. Yeah, no, it, it doesn't stop me taking them. I suppose I can, yeah, we can break for five minutes or, or yeah, chat. So your, your yeah, photos, okay, your photos go, go, go to snapshot level. Yeah, 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 definitely. Because it, I have to be, it, it, it's not something I can instantly switch on or off. It doesn't take me hours to get, I don't have to wander around and take a thousand photos before I, I, I'm in, you know, in tune with it all. But it is something that I have to concentrate on. That could be that could be a photo project on its own, right? It's it's more it's 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 a it would what, be the, the a, rubbish photos um, I took on a photo wall. Most <laughs> distracted photo exhibition or something yeah. along those lines. Yeah, it, I, I like for, for me for me being out there uh, with a camera and and not having a crowd around me. That's a, that's meditation yeah. for me. Yeah, me too. Uh, I, I I I see that uh, the same way. And and by the way, I you know I. I know my Venice neighborhood extremely well. I mean, I know LA pretty well, as I do several cities that I've lived in. But this particular environment, because it's so, I don't know, diverse culturally, diverse uh, visually, you know, you know, from kind of, you know, extremely kind of villages of homeless to bucolic empty beaches to skate parks to galleries to shotgun shacks to multi-million dollar homes all in a neighborhood that pretty much gets along is a very interesting microcosm and you know the, there is the you know the canals and the streets and the, the, there's so much to see and experience that you just don't run out of things and it would be very interesting for someone like myself to actually do a photo walk with others taking them through the alleyways and you know landscapes of of a community whether or not that would um allow me uh, to see it in a different way or just revisit what I already know is something that I don't know. But but I do know that there is um, a joy in, you know, just walking with people who are after the same thing, the, the discovery. It's a of communal a experience. Yeah, I could see the value yeah. in that. Um, I have gone out uh, on a few occasions with a very close friend on a long road trip to specifically to take pictures uh, in Joshua Tree, for example. And that, that, that's just um, our, our, our experience of taking the photographs was quite um, isolating. In other words, we were, we were together, but we were focused on different things. And we, you know, helped each other with gear. We were working with bigger cameras and tripods and the rest and mapping and working, you know, having to show up when it's pitch black in order to catch the first light. It's, it's, it's a lot more fun sometimes to do that with a friend, but the actual, once you've landed there, the, the focus and attention is really on the individual, I would say meditation and connection with, in that case, the landscape. Um, and, and, you know, if we kind of switch to the other paragraph of what, when it is finished, I really feel the need to share and to open it up and to bring a community into the experience through the photography to enable. That's why you make movies. Others. It is. Um, <laughs> yes. I, I, and basically it, it's very self-centered. It's, it's just to say that, <laughs> hey, oh, I'm alive. <laughs> I'm really here. You know, I think Henry Miller <clears throat> quoted uh, the writer Celine, you know, and just calling it a shout out to the universe, this desperate uh, um, shout to say, you're significant, you're here, you existed, you know, and you had your moment on yeah. earth. Um back back to the back to the capture side again cuz i do have like having people around me does have a, a few specific roles in my process um the one is as you just said it's easier when you're with a friend uh, if you want to get up early for a landscape shot but i i have a hard time doing that just on my <laughs> own but with other yeah, people there's a there's more there's a bit more social pressure to 
get that going. That's I, I see this every time I, I do a workshop, I do a photo tour or something. That I can I can get up at five a.m. if I have to, no problem. But on my own, eh, maybe not. <laughs> um, that's the one thing. The other is. Um, it really depends on the ty type of photography. If I if I'm out there just observing, doing like interesting scenes around the neighborhood, interesting. There's an interesting tree. There's a the light. The light is fun. Um, that is one thing. But if I do photography where I need to engage with others, as in let's say street photography. Uh, approach someone say hey i really like that mustache on you can i take a picture of you and then say oh by the way would you mind moving over there the background is so much nicer than the light is better um i'm i've no problems doing this when others are around on my own i'm shy but that that shyness goes away when i have other people around then it's more um i don't know it's, it's not even showing off it's more a uh, more a uh, you're egging each other on a bit. It's it, it 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 just happens. It's just so much easier. So people around me when capturing play a role or play several different roles. It's uh, you yeah. know there there's a, a kind of a parallel feeling. I'd call it more of a feeling. But um, you know I've I've directed um, you know all over the world, and I've often had to work in a language that's not my own. And so through translators or, or a kind of a broken version of my, you know, my inability or <laughs> limited ability to communicate. And I find I really, really like that because you're working with a crew who, A, they don't know you. So there's a kind of like, well, let's see what this, <laughs> let's see how stupid this American is. Um, and so you have to be very precise much more precise in terms of communication, which is more self-aware. And that that community, those challenges, uh, I think, create a self-awareness that, that kind of opens up a, a maybe a, a fresh way of looking at new or old things um, in order to communicate that. And I would imagine that if you're working with a group of people in various languages, um, that there is a... Um, a sense of being able to, A, understand what it is your intention is to communicate and being very precise about that. And that kind of folds back on your own. I mean, I'm sort of ranting here, wandering, but but there is a little a difference in the kinds of, of uh, awareness you bring, um, you know, to the moment when you have to, um, I guess, question your own focus if that, if that makes sense mm -hmm. all right from the capture to the share um now you've taken your photos you have them ready in whichever medium on the screen on on paper at an exhibition or just uh, on on social media um yeah it's it's it, i agree it's a it's a it's a I'm I'm here kind of thing, <laughs> uh, or can be right. So you're you're am maybe you're amplifying the value of that through the sharing. I, I'm oh, interested to know what you guys get out of this, right? Because I only share my photos when Jeremiah tells me it's time again, right? <laughs> <laughs> Hmm. So it, it so so that's why I that's the that's pretty much the only time I ever share photographs. So it, it, it is when I'm nudged by you guys, right? So I mean, which is a good thing. It's a positive thing. It, but I don't. I, I think it depends on what you want to get out of it, because everyone has different goals here. So, so someone might want to um, to be more visible and be may, maybe make a name for themselves, increase their status. So that is one reason. Um, nostalgia, nostalgia can be one. Um, getting someone else to like experience the same joy that you experience when you see the photo, just bringing happiness into the world could be something. I think so. Ev ev evoking emotion. Um, well, here's here's an interesting thing. I, I saw something on Twitter. Somebody had posted um, my phone's memory is full up like i can't put any other pictures on it <laughs> they have a shot of like ten thousand dog pictures 
Well, of their dog. I, right? That's that's. I would call that hoarding, maybe. <laughs> Digital hoarding? hoarding is a thing. Is a thing. But you know, you're uh, Vivian Meyer. Many, good example. How many, <laughs> yeah, how many shots of your dog are you going to share? On the other hand, social media creates sort of this likes, dislikes, or endorphin rush that are immediately uh, exhibiting in a gallery where people can actually stand in front of an image and and study it. Um, showing a a a photo to a friend, a single photo and saying, look at this. Mm. A- again, that's a different experience as well. Um, having a book of photographs that you hand to somebody that they go through over and over again um, is yet a different experience. So I do think that the context of where and how you share a picture is is also different because it creates a different expectation. Um, I'm not that curious about an endorphin rush uh, if my pictures are exhibited on paper on a wall. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm, you know, flattered, amused, happy when somebody enjoys it or comments on it or experiences it. But it's not the same thing as like, putting a picture out on Instagram and it's like, you get, Oh, it's like, 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 love this, love this. That's a different experience. Um, in many ways it satisfies some lizard brain aspect of the I'm here, I'm here. But, uh, the true, uh, experience for me is when somebody spends more than a moment looking at the picture. Uh, that's when I feel I've made a true connection and, that gives me a different kind of satisfaction. I have two two more things here in my notes, and one is uh, contributing to social change. That mm-hmm. could be one of your goals, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. You, w- in whichever way. And the other is fostering communities and inspiring others and educating others. Yes. So I think that's f- photography. Yeah, has many many facets now. Let's turn that around again. Um, this is you as a photographer sharing, but you as a photographer uh, enjoying photography. Let's say put yourself into the in, into a into a gallery. Is that a communal experience for you, or is that a solitary experience for you? Can be both, often, um, but it's fundamentally it's a it's a individual experience. Um, in fact. I was just commenting yesterday to a friend of mine how um, I don't like to read any kind of blurbs or any kind of explanation of a process or a um, context of a work, whether it's painting, photography, or sculpture, it doesn't matter. Before I get to experience it on my own with no context and just seeing how I feel about it. Once I have that washed over me, that wave of, then I may walk away, that's enough, or I may want to know more. And that's when I'll kind of read a blurb or turn to someone or exchange a a dynamic between someone who's watching it or looking at it as well. Um, And that's just me. I don't, you know, say that uh, universal thing, but I always really, really want to experience the moment, that connection between the image and the observer on my own, in my own head, heart, mind, whatever. Yeah, Um, definitely definitely that works for me as well, whether it's in a gallery or in a, I mean, it's a bit easier if you're sitting at home reading a book, isn't it? Right. Because yeah, yeah. Because then, then you, then you can be on your own very easily. But for me, even if it's in a crowded gallery, the experience is a very one-to-one experience, right? Yeah, me and the 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 work, me and the piece of art, whatever it might be. Sure. Um, I'm always the one that ends up being, you know, everybody's already out in the cafe and eating cake when I've like cleared the first hall of the gallery, right? You know, it's, <laughs> so I'm uh, I I I get lost in these places and I love every minute of it. But for me, it is a very individual experience, and it's it's nice if somebody that I've you know i'm with but occasionally a stranger but if or, or somebody i'm with um happens to be in the same place and having a yeah you know, and get to share a thought 
Yeah, it's like no, I don't like to go to crowded yesterday. gallery openings because I always find, I mean, yes, it's a party, blah, 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 catch up with people, but you don't get to experience the art because the energy is so diffuse. It's much better often to come back to that gallery uh, when it's quiet and, mm -hmm. and yeah. move through the imagery. For me, I, I like being in, in a gallery with Monica because I know that we have some very similar sensibilities when it comes to visual art. So we'll, 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 we'll see a picture and then we'll just glance at each, at each other and go, mm, yes. Yeah. <laughs> so that, that is, that's, I think <laughs> that's, that's nice. a good like thing, that. but in general, it's, it's a solitary experience. Um, and by the way, some of the best movie watching experiences I've ever had in my life where when I watched them cold without knowing anything about it. Yeah, absolutely. The, the title, maybe maybe the, the poster, and that's it. And then um, not, well, not a trailer, no nothing. And uh, some, some of those movies sure. are still my favorites because I'm it, it was such such a visceral experience of, uh, oh, yeah. of experiencing it unprimed. Yeah, it's important. I, I you know, as a filmmaker, I never ever read a review or a comment about a film that I haven't seen. I want to yeah. know nothing. I'm either drawn to it or I'm not. But if I am drawn to it or someone says, you should see this, I just go, that's all I need to know. I don't want to know why or how or what, you know, where I just want to go and experiencing it. And then we can talk about it. But um, I do feel that I do appreciate um, very, very clever, smart, contextual critique of of art and and film, uh, though we're losing a lot of that in film, people just give their opinion, but but not put it in a context, which is important, you know. But to see a film and then read a review that may maybe deepens it after you've had the experience, that's okay too. Maybe you want to see it again in a different um, context. Um, but I think the same thing applies to all kind of creative endeavors that one experiences um the connection finally on a deep level is i believe individual sharing that individual moment i'm sure you and monica may agree that a picture is amazing and um, share that moment but i'm sure the individual experiences of that are somewhat different They're of not course exactly they are the same uh, uh, how how can I know what her experience is exactly like? You could not. <laughs> Impossible. So, so the question is, what does that mean for the future of photography? And I have nothing smart to say here. Well, I I I think that that I and mean, we touched on this last week, but but I think the isolation of the experience um is both uh, remarkable in that it really again forces you inside yourself and your your one-on-one -on -one with the medium and on the other hand robs you of that look to your partner your friend your community and nodding saying this is us sharing the humanity of of interacting with a work of art and so i think the tension between both of those things is 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 real and as we tip more towards isolation for a lot of reasons, post-pandemic, culturally, um, technologically, um, those things become and can become problematic socially, politically, um, and, and um, I don't know where that's going to lead us. But um, I think it's important for us to always reach out to community, even to reaffirm our relationship as individuals with, with the work and with each other. Wise words. Adrian, anything to add? <laughs> I'm still processing the wise words. I think so. <laughs> I have yeah, no idea um, what I just said. I think... Uh, uh, so, sorry, I didn't want to put you on the spot here. <laughs> no, 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 no. I think my because my, my head was going completely in a different direction actually. So I've I, I've I've fallen into that trap. You get we all get into occasionally of listening to the podcast and forgetting I'm actually making the podcast. <laughs> um, but the 
and enjoy and enjoying the conversation. But the I think for me, my head was going another way, and I was like, because I in in a month or so's time is the photography show in, here in the UK. Um, uh, so it'd be a good chance to wander the exhibition floor and 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 play with new products and things like that. So my my head was thinking, okay, well, I wonder if somebody's gonna you. Know, bring out a product which is i don't know some, some sort of camera that has like five devices that all talk to each other somehow and you can go out on a photo walk and and you can have a shared experience and actually do yeah you know, some it, it almost sort of invert it and say actually you know uh, instead of uh, 200 people trying to figure out what one image looks like and make that the best image it can be moving or still yeah, what if you could get five people and just go nuts and and you know each with a camera that is connected in some way and is uh, and and creates some images, you know, it, you know that that are a combination of all five different views on the shot at one time. Everyone is wearing everyone is wearing a, a headset and everyone can tap into everyone else's feed. Oh, no, no, it's no, funny. No, it's, it's not 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 homogenous surveillance like situation. No, 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 you, no dystopian surveillance like situation. Oh, I, 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 everybody should have their own. Uh, no, there should be okay. some like there should be some like back end product so that everybody can take their own camera, right? And you know, then then the cameras will talk to a back end thing, and then it will mush up their images or something like that. Anyway, I don't know. I I, I I I haven't really got a, a great idea, a clear idea of what the. If you really want to but... screw up your head, a friend of mine came over. We were we were experimenting with the Vision Pro, and um, we FaceTimed uh, because we, Zoom was just horrible, impossible. We FaceTimed and shared screen one at a time. So I shared my screen. So he was looking in his goggles, seeing what I was seeing through my goggles. Right. And I wanted her and he then took pictures right. through my vision. There you go. That's and a communal I, experience. Uh, right. And I did the same thing community. with him. And it was so meta that I, <laughs> I'm still not <laughs> over it. I, the pictures themselves are like, what am I looking at? Is it my point of view, his point of view, of my point of view? I Anyway, um, that's that's I, how people go mad. Yeah, yeah, that's well, how it happens. Here I am. Yeah. That's yeah. how it starts. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, I've. I think. I think we have. We have given everyone who's watching this or listening to this uh, plenty of food food for thought for at least a week. So, of course, we would like your opinions. You can hit us up on our Discord. The link is in the show notes and on the screen. Um, sharing is caring interact make this a communal experience um let's move on to the picks of the week i have one that just was announced a few days ago um and it has to do with sora that we talked about the video generation text to video thing and one thing you notice when you watch these these examples is they are silent movies. There is no audio in them. So, because um, it's a text-to-video and not a text-to-video audio model and a company that is known for their audio generation capabilities is 11 labs and they have just i th don't think there's any point in showing this because i can't show audio but um we'll link to that youtube video they have uh, announced something that will make background audio like foley and sounds and things that fit to the image and i think that is our ai enabled ai automated in some fashion that's my understanding so uh, if you see the robot uh, in this futuristic thing you will hear robot sounds they will fit with the image when you see the lady walking in tokyo with the, on the rainy street then you will hear her footsteps and uh, that is all in one one way or another pretty much automated that, that's my understanding right now yeah so, the, the, uh, plus I, narration and everything yeah. so I, I was amazed when i saw this um i i suspect what it is is much like the describe function of mid-journey where you just put up a picture and ask it to describe it if you put the video in and yeah it will describe the video and in other words analyze all of the things that are in it and then ascribe um, sounds 
to that footsteps on pavement. Well, and it has to be synchronous and everything, right? And it will generate those sounds. And whether those sounds are based on library or just wave patterns, I don't know. But it's pretty sophisticated, pretty well, amazing. Well, they, they, they clone voices. They generate audio in a, in a pretty high level, very, very yeah. high quality. So I would expect them to just just have an AI spit it out. So. Mm-hmm. <laughs> pretty amazing. Yeah, so for you as a filmmaker, or let's say for, for Foley artists, bye that bye. is like the stock photographers, they're on the way out, unfortunately. Yeah. I, I I so enjoyed these behind-the-scenes looks into a Foley studio with all the weird mm. contraptions and things that they end. And, and the, the, the way they crumple some paper and it's a fireplace and wow, it's amazing. I, it's I, really fun I love that see. as a kid, I still love it now. To to do a fight scene and just to see these big guys slamming into sides of beef, <laughs> or or slamming <laughs> on their own chest and stuff. I, I I saw I saw one where a foley artist said after after doing a fight scene, sometimes he comes home bruised because <laughs> it's like scene, hitting his own arm. Sex scenes are, are particularly fun. Too. <laughs> 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 thanks for planting that picture in my mind. Yeah, thanks, um, Adrian. Mind. Adrian, you brought us. Uh, uh, I, I brought us the, the next crank of the handle. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, anybody uh, who, who watches camera announcements can't fail to have seen this week uh, the announcement of the Fuji X100, uh, the next generation, which is generation six. Um, yes. Uh, about the only thing that surprised me about this, actually, was that it seemed apparently it's four years since the last generation was released. So I hadn't appreciated it was that long. Um, so, but this one is uh, c- continues the chase, uh, t- uh, chasing Leica, you know, um, and uh, trying to make the V pocket camera. Uh, this one with a thirty five mil equivalent lens, um, a forty megapixel sensor now. So, you know, it's, it's pretty good in body yeah. stabilization. Uh, you know, th- the mm-hmm. thing is, we've I've, I've talked about this just a few days ago on the Happy Shooting podcast, and uh, the th- what I noticed is that in the in the social media circles i'm i'm i uh, i'm around i've heard more buzz around about this camera than about virtually any other camera before and to the point where photographers were like i had four or five people on the first day this camera was announced who said i just ordered it wow okay so and 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 a couple more going. I'm really thinking about doing that. So something, and I, and I tried to find out what it was. And I think one aspect is that the this is version six, version five was notoriously hard to get. So I yeah, think yeah. there's a lot of mm-hmm. FOMO. People want to upgrade and get this camera. Um, I don't think the features are really the 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 driving factor here. And no, I don't think I don't think so. But but they, for the 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 version five did have several steps up, um, yeah. and of course it has been largely unavailable for most of its life cycle. Uh, this new one is being made in China rather than Japan in order to try and unblock that. So people are expecting to be able to get it, um, which is the thing, a step the, up from the old one, which you couldn't get at all. So, the, you know. the thing the <laughs> thing around that is, I've just seen some rumors, someone pointed me towards some rumors, is that this thing has now been pre-ordered in China half a million times. <laughs> wow, oh, okay. And uh, so apparently, uh, if, uh, if you can believe that, the pre-orders are through the roof. It um, The other number I heard is they can only build like 180,000 a year. So oh, okay, so they already the, sold out. Lifetime supply sold out already. Okay, it, great. It, that's what it sounds like. Um, again, if those rumors are true, they were on some rumor specific website. So and and pretty highly rated. It, Is it an inter- cameras, interchangeable right? lens or fixed lens? Fixed lens, no, thirty five millimeters equivalent. A, yeah, it's um, it, it's a really great camera. I had the price first point? generation of price point, uh, sixteen hundred. Some yeah, things. It's not. It's not uh, compared to some other cameras out there. It's not. Oh, yeah. um, well, it is still a, a lot of money, but still, still a very. I think if you compare it, it is, to a Leica, then no, it's nothing. No, it's a third. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So okay. let's see. I've. I've. Let's I see, wonder. Let's see if they come out in the real world or not. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And last but not least, uh, Jeremiah doing 
the thing he's done for a few episodes now he's bringing us a photographer because this is a photography podcast that's it who's dave giordano no little or nothing about him except his images are spectacular and so another inspiration also i love when people put a folio of two pictures <laughs> in a folio I, I i just feel it takes balls oh i like I this it. style beautiful I mean, such a cleanliness yeah to the compositions this is like you wouldn't call this minimalist no but there is a simplicity and a, a, a just a, a structural architecture of how he sees that is very specific and i think very inspired so i bring this yeah. as a way of inspiring as opposed to last week's which was just a jamming black and white street photographer he likes to shoot yeah. at night which went for i never got to the bottom of that website i got lost in it after the show and never got to the bottom of that page it seemed to go on forever i, I did have to say having a look at dave giordano's work just before the show um i that he's done some stuff around detroit uh, which I really like. It's, it seemed a bit different from some of the stuff that you know, a, a lot of people like to portray Detroit as a as a broken place, right? There these days, and actually, I think his collection of stuff around Detroit was called Unbroken, um, or something like that. I maybe forget the precise wording, and um, and and so you know, it was a, a little bit maybe le less biased or, or less um, le less. Yeah, trying to put forward a strong message. I like of the how bad it is. There. I'm, I'm, I'm a great fan of the like almost documentary nature of it. It has a lot of Becker vibes, right? The yeah. documenting buildings and and uh, streets and stuff at night. I, yeah. Anyway, I like bringing these little inspiring. Um, they, you, you're doing an awesome job. I love you know, it. Yeah, uh, great. Being, there's so much in photography. Photography is so alive, <laughs> despite some of our. Continuing conversations about AI, there is really nothing like um, just a beautifully rendered still photograph. It'll, it'll be a while till AI can come up with stuff like this. Yeah, another week. Um, yeah, well, two. Let's make it two. Well, thank you for unearthing this for us. That is mm -hmm. very cool. So that brings us to the end. I I really enjoyed today's discussion. That was... Yes, me too. It took us took us down a different route, a philosophical route here. Yeah. Um, so yeah, solitary or shared. Hmm. Everyone listening to this, join the discussion. I think this is a topic worth worth talking about and and sharing and coming together. So our Discord is the right place to go. It's a nice nice community there. And, yeah. Definitely. Uh, I, I was I was key, uh, pleased to receive a message after yeah, on the Discord uh, asking after my well-being from when I had power cuts that took me out of the show. <laughs> All right, and we'll be back next week. Until then, everyone, take care. Bye bye. Bye. You've been listening to the Future of Photography. Subscribe to the show wherever you get your other podcasts. Find the show notes and more information at thefutureofphotography.com. <laughs>